awesome, rawsome lunches. This will be a fun day. We're going to have soup, sandwich, and we're going to even make a salad bowl that you can eat. Stand by. We'll be right back. Hello and welcome to Let's Cook. We are the Rita Cells. I am Jeff and this is my beautiful bride Nancy. Today we're going to do some really interesting things. We're going to teach you to make a salad bowl that you can eat. Now that sounds real intriguing. This is something brand new that I've just tried and uh, it actually works. We're going to show you a cool machine too and uh, we're going to have, um, we're going to make a sandwich, Nancy's favorite sandwich, and then we're going to have a couple of soups that are just awesomely rawsome good. Now, this is really exciting because we're going to be using one of your favorite tools, mm -hmm. the spiruli. Yep. Now, the spiruli is a gadget that you found that you really enjoy using, and we've used it in the last many cooking schools that we've done around the country, mm -hmm. and everyone that sees it just absolutely loves it. They fall in love with Mr. Spiruli. Because you can do so much with it, and it's so exciting. So I want to show everybody what it looks like. It is just such a neat little gadget. And you can make anything from fruits and vegetables, all different shapes and sizes. Go ahead, Chefy, tell them how you do it. Well, it has replaceable blades, so you can make different sizes of spaghetti noodles, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, zucchini noodles or whatever. And also, uh, which we're going to use today for potatoes. And it has There's the other blade. And also has a third blade that's just a slicer, and it will do things like... Um, Potato, potato chips, chips and carrot chips, chips and apple chips and all this other stuff. It's, a, it's a very versatile. It's very inexpensive. And it's very durable. We use this to do 600 pounds of zucchini, zucchini for a 3ABN camp meeting last year. And that was so, <coughs> so cool. We actually had an uh, electric drill. I took the handle off and had an electric drill on the end of this and we'd just shoot them through and it would shoot out 8 and 10 foot links of spaghetti. Tim the tool man, at it again. But we're not going to do that with the okay. zucchini. We're going to use some potatoes and we're going to actually make the basis of a salad bowl that you can eat. Okay, well why don't we read the recipe first and then get set up. Okay, let's do that. Very, very simple recipe. We're using Yukon Gold potatoes or some kind of yellow potatoes, chicken style seasoning and lemon juice. Can't get much easier than that. That was pretty simple. Nope. Oh. And the amount of potatoes you use will depend on how many people you're serving. Okay. So, if you're serving, say, 10 people, then you're going to use basically one... 10 potatoes. One pound potatoes. Gee, These that was hard. Small. <laughs> These are small, so they're not going to make as much, but we just want to show you how it works. All right. What we're going to do, we're going to spindle this on the front spindle. We're going to push it on hard. This is the smaller of the two um, for making spaghetti, so I'm going to make a thin linguine type. Okay. And then we bring this movable portion on with all the little spiky things. We're going to spear the potato from the back. We're going to set it like that. The machine has got little suction cups. It'll hold itself down. So I don't really have to hold the machine down. I'll just hold the handle. Boy, now isn't that too cool? And not only does it do that, but it gives me little mushrooms oh, that I can decorate with that and garnish cool. with. So let me have another one. We'll do three here. That'll make a sufficient uh, salad bowl. It really doesn't matter how you spindle the potato, as long as it gets on there really good. And like that, really good. Hold on to this handle for security. You mm, want put those in the bowl. You think so? That might be a good idea. We need now, a you can, shorter bowl. You can either... Um, peel the potato or leave it unpeeled. It just depends on the effect that you want. Yeah, in this case, we're going to leave it unpeeled. We have washed these potatoes. There's nutrition in the skins. Let's do one more. One more little potato. If we're using the little potatoes, it's going to basically take three of the smaller potatoes to make a salad bowl. And we're going to also cover these potatoes in a little lemon juice and some chicken-style seasoning to give them some flavor. And why the lemon juice? Well, the lemon juice is for keeping the potatoes nice and fresh looking. We don't want dead looking potatoes, so the lemon juice will actually keep it from oxidizing. Okay. 
Okay, so let's just take the spiruli let's just off. Move this off the countertop a little bit. This is such a cool device. I just, I know you really enjoy this. It does have some quick release feet. There you go. All right. Let okay. me put the lemon juice on here. And how much? It doesn't really matter as long as it's well coated because we're going to drain it off. And they have some chicken style seasoning, which is whatever chicken style seasoning that you like. Let's do this now. Take the plate. Okay, and this is going to go onto a dehydrator sheet. Mm -hmm. and a little aluminum foil. Now, what's the aluminum foil for? Well, it's to make it separate easier, and plus it's going to keep the potatoes in line a little bit more. Okay, so you are going to put this into an Excalibur dehydrator, mm -hmm. and this will dry those potatoes, and as it dries, it will actually stick together because of the carbohydrates in there, mm -hmm. and it will form a boat or a bowl. Bowl that you can eat. Depending on what shape you want it, you just use a different kind of bowl. Now, this looks really like a lot of potatoes, but once you take the water out of it, of course, it'll shrink down and shrink down, and then I'll season it a little bit. And seasoning is not necessary, but I think it adds a little flavor, obviously, and uh, it makes you where you can eat the whole bowl. And then, after this is put into the dehydrator, it generally stays overnight. Mm. Is that correct? And then in we the morning, we'll, we'll come in, we'll remove it from the sheet, and we'll flip it upside down and take the bowl off, and then we'll peel the aluminum foil off. Okay. And then we'll have a, a bowl that you can eat. Which we will show you at the end of the show, because we're going to have it there for display, stuffed with a beautiful salad. Okay, that looks like a great recipe, an easy idea for a luncheon. Let's try our next recipe. We're going to do some very tasty soups. The first one we're doing is the savory sunshine soup. We're using three tomatoes, one carrot, a medium cucumber, one avocado, two tablespoons Bragg's liquid aminos, one tablespoon olive oil, a teaspoon of coconut oil, a teaspoon of fresh lemon juice, and jalapeno to taste. This is a wonderful soup that you can eat either cold or hot. It's, a, it's so savory, and when you put it into your blender, <laughs> it doesn't matter what you put in it, just enjoy the flavors. And we're going to have the five flavor profiles because when you're combining raw foods together, you want five flavors. It's sweet, sour, savory, salty, and bitter. When you put these fl five flavor profiles together, then you're having a combination of flavors that is just incredible. We like to call it a symphony of flavors. Symphony. Symphony of flavors. And in the symphony of flavors, the fat carries the, ta the taste. The fat always carries the flavor. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, let's put it together. We're going to put a little bit of water in the blender just always to start first. It. And we may add a little more later, depending on how thick the soup is. Now, if you want a creamy soup, you can use some soy milk or almond milk but we've used some distilled water and we're going to put in some cucumbers. cucumbers. A lot of water content in the cucumbers, so these will release a lot of liquids. And if you want a chunky soup, you use less water. Mm -hmm. If you want a thinner soup, you a use more. Avocados, this will give a natural um, fat and plus a creamy consistency. Then some, sa some sunshine carrots and tomatoes. You can either put them in whole or cut them in half. Well, I think I'll make it a little bit easier on our blender, and we'll just quarter them. Don't do this at home <laughs> without a cutting board. Okay. This is um, a trick that most chefs do not use their hand for cutting boards, but... No one that I know. Jeff seems to enjoy doing that. Saves time. Don't look too close at my hands. <laughs> this soup... When you want to eat it as a cold soup for um, like a summertime weather, it's really nice to, to have it as a cold soup or like a bisque. If you want to warm it up, we just put it into a pot and put it on the stove and warm it up just enough to, to taste it. That way it doesn't destroy any of the enzymes. The vitamins and minerals are still intact and um, all the proteins are still good. Let's put the rest of the ingredients in here. And Okay, that's the olive oil, then a little coconut oil just to give it some body. Coconut oil also helps to get rid of the hydrogenated fats in, in your blood, so we like to use some coconut oil. A little lemon juice. Lemon juice is the bitter. And the Bragg's liquid aminos is the savory. 
And also the saltiness. And saltiness, that's all. And notice that there are, is no salt in this recipe either. Oops. And there went my jalapeno. Okay, a little jalapeno. Which is optional, of course. The jalapeno just seems to, to give it that burst of flavor. It just brings it together. Depending on how hot you like it, you just um, add a little or less. I put a little bit in there. Actually, you shouldn't be able to taste the heat. Right. You should have a combination of flavors so that nothing tastes specifically by itself. That looks like a great soup. We're going to go for a little creamy on this one. Okay, that sometimes, looks like a great combination. Sometimes right we there. like to leave them chunky, sometimes a little creamy. I like this one, I think, a little creamy. Sunshine soup. This is a delectable soup. The other day I had this at home. It was really cold out, and I just made it up and heated it up onto the, on the stove, and it was so satisfying. Had it with some sprouted grain bread. Oh, it was so delicious. We've got another soup to do for you today. We're going to do a rawsam soup. Oh, so good, too. Um, we're going to put the recipe on the screen, and we're going to do a refrigerator soup. This is anything that you can find in your refrigerator that would blend together. Using as a base, two cups of soy milk or raw tahini, one stalk of celery, cubed, half a cup of baby carrots, or one whole carrot, one to two cups of fresh mung bean sprouts, one small avocado, one quarter cup of onion, two cloves of garlic, fresh cilantro, one half red bell pepper, one half a cucumber, one half zucchini, a stalk of broccoli, a half of jalapeno, and two to four tablespoons of Bragg's liquid aminos. This is another great soup that you can have either cold or hot. Okay. I frankly like this one a little warm, so let's make it. We'll put everything in the blender, starting off with the fresh soy milk that I made. Use all two cups of it? Yep. Okay. Two cups go in there. Boy, that smells good. Oh, the fresh soy milk is wonderful. I like to make that in the soy toy and just really have a nice full-bodied soy milk. Okay, and the avocado. Avocado is a nice fresh avocado. That's part of our savory. And we've got some tomatoes and peppers together. Yellow or red peppers. We do not use green peppers when we cook our raw foods because we're finding out that it's much harder to digest the green peppers than it is to digest the red or yellow ones. So we like to use the, the colored peppers. They're much easier to digest. They have more enzymes in them, digestive enzymes, and plus they taste better. Okay. Cucumbers. Cucumbers. Zucchini. Is a zucchini a cousin to a cucumber? I think it is. It's also a cousin to a squash. God made such neat food, didn't he? Oh, so many colors and flavors. The onions and garlic and, and jalapeno, jalapeno. All together. Again, here. all of these are optionals for anybody that doesn't like onions. Just leave them out. And the celery will give us a little sodium. This plus a lot of fiber. Lots of fiber. Celery is an excellent food to use. What else do we have here? Carrots. Carrots. Sunshiny carrots. And then I like to use the cilantro in the soup because it really gives it a nice um, savory flavor, almost a bitter savory. It's got a little bite to it. Yeah, too. it does. But cilantro is an excellent herb for getting the heavy metals out of the blood. So we like to use a lot of cilantro. It keeps the blood cleansed. It increases the vitamin E. It's very nutritional for us. Okay, Bragg's liquid aminos gives it that saltiness. So far we've got all the flavors uh, in the orchestra. Mm -hmm. And now our famous mung beans that we just love so much. They're great on sandwiches, they're great in soups, on salads. It really adds a lot. And in we add the, the roots soup. and the and the chlorophyll. The, we add the whole thing. The green chlorophyll is fantastic for increasing our immune system and really making us feel healthy. You could say we have everything in here but the kitchen sink. <laughs> yes, we do. Everything except for animal products. Let's and see if that's it'll one thing we don't want to use in there. Let's see if this can handle all this. Gonna leave
it just a little chunky. I love this soup. It is so delicious. And it varies every time we make it. Because it de depends on how much water is in your fruit, so your vegetables that you're putting into the soup, as to how creamy your soup will be. But boy, is that ever good. A beautiful green soup. Mm -hmm. Now, to serve it, we would put like a concasse in there of some of the vegetables, mm -hmm. which we'll do later at the end of the show. Now, you have one more soup that is probably my favorite all-time soup that you introduced me to about three years ago. Yes, and this one is a sweet soup, and I think you'll really enjoy this one. Sweet surprise soup. We're going to use three cups of butternut squash that we peeled, seeded, and chopped, a cubed mango, two teaspoons of curry seasoning, a pinch of minced jalapeno, which is optional, four cups of fresh orange juice, half cup of honey or dates. Then to garnish it, we're going to use a sliced banana or plantain, a half a cup of chopped mint, and a mango that have been seeded, peeled, and diced. This is a recipe that we really like to do. We've done it for quite a few cooking schools already now and for camp meeting, mm -hmm. and everyone seems to love it. Yeah. Easy, easy to do. And all you do is use a blender, and this is a cold soup. You don't want to heat the soup up because it's a, more like a fruit soup. It's a summertime soup. Summertime soup, you can use it. Well, it's actually a wintertime soup, too, because it depends on um, where you can get your mangoes and your butternut squash. Butternut squash is actually um, a fruit. So we use that together with the mangoes, bananas, and dates, and it's a good combination. Basically, everything here is technically a fruit because the seed is inside the skin. That's exactly right. Pretty cool. All right, I squeezed you some orange juice this morning, and um, I also just left some whole oranges in to give a little pulp. I love it that way. So it makes for a nice, rich bodied flavor. Just and those are some great in. oranges, too. Oh, by so the way. sweet. They're so sweet. All right. We always start with our liquid first, and then we put into our chunks. I'll tell you, butternut squash, you have to be a little careful when you cut it, when you peel it and slice it. It's a very hard um, uh, fruit, and you can cause serious injury by slipping off of it, and, and you have to have a very sharp knife and, and a good cutting board. That's why I let you cut the butternut squash. Uh, our mango. And then banana. Big old chunky bananas. And then some dates that we have pre-soaked in orange juice to soften them just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Makes it a little easier on the machines. Gives it a little sweetness to it. Or you can use honey if you don't want to use the dates. And you took the dates out. I mean the, the seeds out. The, the pits, pits out, out right? The dates. Because it's the pits when we miss them. Yes, it is. A little bit of our, actually we made this curry uh, seasoning. Curry is just a combination. There is not such a thing as a curry nut or a curry seed. Curry is a combination of uh, seasonings. Several different seasonings. And a little bit of jalapeno just to burst the flavor. Pinch. And just whiz it up. This, ch this little champ juice uh, blender really does blend things up quickly. Um, I like it because it's a variable speed. Hmm. All right, now we're going to go to high. Okay. Oh, yeah, nice and creamy. That looks so delicious. Now, you can have it a nice, thick, chunky like that, or if you want it thinner, you can add more orange juice. But I frankly love it like this. It's almost like a fruit stew, if you will. Yeah, and it's so good as a cold soup. Now, now you're going to garnish the top, right? Put a concasse in there, and you might want to explain what a concasse is. Well, my understanding is that a concasse gives an idea to the... Uh, person about to eat the food, the soup in this case, in most cases, um, what's inside without having to ask the waiter, what's this soup made out of? So basically it's just uh, some of what's inside on top of. A garnishing of toppings of what the ingredients are inside the soup. So we're going to put some bananas and some mangoes and then just for a little green color we'll add some fresh mint. To give it a little savory flavor. You know, also a concasse serves the purpose of a little difference in texture. Instead of the whole soup being smooth and creamy, it's a, it's a little texture. And texture is good because it gives you that oral satisfaction. Right, a little bit of mint here. 
for flavor and also for garnish. Okay. And I'd say that's ready. That looks beautiful. I'll just stick a little on top. The final recipe for the day is probably your, your favorite that I make you, and that's our, you call it, you named it our ta Taos sandwich. I could never figure out the name until you described to me what the letters stood for. Well, let's look at the recipe on the screen and see what this is. A Taos sandwich, interesting name. Sliced tomatoes, sliced avocados, sweet onions, julienne, alfalfa or mung bean sprouts, sun-dried tomatoes, a vegan mayonnaise, a sprouted grain bread. Okay, when I want to really get to Nancy's heart, I make her favorite sandwich, and this is definitely her favorite sandwich. I start out with a piece of sprouted grain, savory sprouted grain bread, and this is going to be an open-faced sandwich, so that'll be the basis of it. Now, sometimes I'll put a vegan mayo on, uh, such as veginase or something that we make. Today, we're going to do it a little differently. We're going to put some of our uh, herb cheese spread. This herb cheese spread that you made is absolutely incredible, and I love that as the base for the sandwich. The, the veginase I enjoy, the vegan mayos I enjoy also, but this really adds a lot to it. We do have recipes for this. For those that are interested in wanting to find out more of the recipes, you can contact 3ABN and be able to get some of these recipes that we're using. This particular one, um, we did not show you today, but we do have a recipe for that, and it is really good. Okay, I'm going to put some of your favorite red onions. These are semi-mild. They have a little bit of a kick to them. They're not like the sweets, but they're not real bitey. My favorite is the Mayan sweet or the Bermuda onion or, or the Walla, Walla 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 sweet. Or Vidalia. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to take and uh, thin slice a couple of tomato slices here. That go on there. Love the tomatoes. Oh, but they're so much better in the summertime when they're really red and vine ripened. It's one thing I miss about not being able to live at home, and that's to have our own garden. Grow our own, right. Okay, the avocado, which would be next, is a... Sometimes it's hard to find a good avocado, and you never know what you have until, surprise, you open it up. And sometimes there are surprises <laughs> like that. The last one was really good. Uh-huh. So we're going we're gonna to just scoop out the good portions here of it. Put it on top of the sandwich. This is a wonderful sandwich. Um, Jeff will often serve it to me with some homemade potato chips, which we love to make in the dehydrator. And bring it upstairs when I'm working or in the motor home when we're traveling, and it just really pleases my palate. Now, you also have some cheese here that is an excellent homemade cheese. This is our cashew cheese made with uh, herbs and um, um, red bell pepper. And it looks for all the world like real cheese. Well, it tastes for all the world like real cheese. Except so much better for you. Well, see, cheese doesn't have to be made with an animal product. Cheese is just a term. It's not a patented word. Well, so. we know that the cheese today is made from dairy products, and we don't want to do any dairy products because it's so much healthier not to use dairy products. And I'll top it off with sprouts for you, and you love the sprouts. Alfalfa sprouts or mung sprouts. There you have a complete food. You have a compact nutrition. It's very satisfying. And we're just going to set it right here on this plate. Of course. And make a delicious sandwich. And when you serve this with a bowl of soup that we made, mm. oh, is that an incredible savory luncheon. Magnifique. And it's also some of your um, chips. You make chips some delicious there. potato chips using the spiruli. It is just so great. Well, we're going to get everything set up and come back and show you all the things that we've made and tell you just a little bit more about how you can get these recipes. And we'll be back in just a moment. We hope you've enjoyed Let's Cook with Jeff and Nancy Rita Sell. Now let's take a moment to review our Rawsome Lunch recipes. For the potato nests, you will need Yukon Gold Potatoes, chicken style seasoning, and lemon juice. For the savory sunshine soup, you will need three tomatoes, one carrot, one medium cucumber, one avocado, 
two tablespoons of Bragg's liquid aminos, one tablespoon of olive oil, one teaspoon of coconut oil, one teaspoon of fresh lemon juice, and jalapeno to taste. For the refrigerator soup, you will need two cups of soy milk or raw tahini, one stalk of celery, cubed, one half cup of baby carrots or one whole, one to two cups of fresh mung bean sprouts, one small avocado, one quarter cup of onion, two cloves of garlic, fresh cilantro, one half of a red bell pepper, one half of a cucumber, one half of a zucchini, one stalk of broccoli, one half of a jalapeno, and two to four tablespoons of Bragg's liquid aminos. For the sweet surprise soup, you will need three cups of butternut squash, peeled, seeded, and chopped, one mango cubed, two teaspoons of curry seasoning, a pinch of minced jalapeno, which is optional, four cups of fresh orange juice, and one half cup of honey or dates. For the garnish, you'll need one plantain or banana sliced, one half cup of chopped mint, and one mango seeded, peeled, and diced. For the towel sandwich, you will need sliced tomatoes, sliced avocados, sweet onions julienned, alfalfa sprouts or mung bean sprouts, sun-dried tomatoes, vegan mayonnaise, and sprouted grain bread. If you would like more information, or if you would like to contact Jeff and Nancy Redesell, you may write to 3ABN, Post Office Box 220, West Frankfort, Illinois, 62896, or call 1-800-752-3226. Now let's get back to the program and take a look at our Rossum Lunch Recipes with Jeff and Nancy. Hi, and welcome back. Wow, look at this food. I am getting hungry. This is such an array of colors and textures and sizes and every, every flavors that you can imagine. The first thing that we made was this beautiful potato bowl that we filled with salad. And it's a complete salad bowl that you can eat. It's just an amazing gourmet <laughs> dish that you can serve to guests. Then we made this savory sunshine soup that can be served hot or cold. It's just a lovely tasting soup. And then the next one was our Rossum Refrigerator Soup. I love the greenness of this soup. It's so tasty. And then the Sweet Surprise Soup, which is a nice sweet cold soup to use in the summertime. And to top that off, you made my absolute most favorite sandwich of the sprouted grain bread and the tomatoes and avocados. What a feast. You know, it's funny, people ask us uh, sometimes, well, you're vegetarians, what do you eat? And I say, just about anything we want. Yeah, it's great. God has blessed us. I hope that you will have a blessed day also.